This video has some improvements that I used when building the culvert exit wall. It was important to mix the contents of the bags and then set it on the face one last time and pack it so that it would be a smooth face where you actually see the wall. Taping the bottom edges of the bags and then attaching straps across the bags actually prevented them from stretching and causing cracks when it set up. This was one of the big improvements that I really liked when I did this project. This is the culvert exit. Here cracks are filled by soaking the bags with water and washing concrete in the voids. The final top coat can be a thicker mix of concrete as well as when coating the sides and the bottoms of the culvert entrances. Building in smaller sections, rebar can be used to link the next set of bags that are placed on the project. Here the centers of two rows of bags were broken apart to bridge the centers together. Notice that the tape was required to keep it from spreading. Culvert walls were filled with concrete between the voids. Here, paper was torn off between the sections. While placing rebar, holes were punched through the bags to bond and link the bags together. Galvanized threaded rod may be better than zinc plated. Keeping the rebar within the wall should help with cover protection. Here non-woven fabric was covered with plastic and water was used to soak the bags. Pre-soaking the paper bags with water will soften them so it's real easy to remove with the low setting on the pressure washer. The paper that's embedded on the end of the bags was chipped away with a sledgehammer and then pressure washed. 
Since this is a culvert wall, this box will be coated with concrete. Using one quarter inch rebar, these voids in between the bags can be packed and filled with concrete. This will help with rebar cover protection if the culvert gets flooded with water. Next, I'll explain some finishing methods. By prepping the area with water and sprinkling dry concrete, these top areas were coated real well. Here, S mortar was used to cover the culvert entrance. Here, a liquid concrete was allowed to flow down at an angle so that water will not pool on the top of this wall. Some S mortar was used here and some regular concrete in a thick form was washed and packed into these areas right here where the water will tend to make contact most with the culvert. Retaining walls really don't need to be packed because the water must flow through. The top section should be sealed as well as any cracks that might be in the sides. These bags were exposed to some water, yet they weren't completely solid. As you notice, the water just absorbs right into them, so I wanted to see how they looked. I ended up covering them up and with plastic and sprayed water on them and let them go overnight. Another reason I opened the bags is because I was impatient and wanted to know if they were set up yet. And since they weren't, I had to cover them up. So it's been about a year since I built this culvert entrance wall and it's holding up pretty good. I hope this information that I put together helps you make a better concrete bag wall or whatever your project is. I know it's not conventional but it works for me and when I needed it done I could easily do it. Take care and have a great day.